So today is Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. Uh, the readings for today are on the screen. I'm going to be reading from Acts and from John. So from Acts, with respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead, I am on trial. This is Paul talking. The following night the Lord said by him and said, Take courage, for as you have testified about me at Jerusalem, so you must bear witness also at Rome. So we see the correlation between the resurrection and testifying about Christ or the ontological ground of the personality. And from John, a little while and you will see me no more. Again, a little while and you will see me. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in my name. So in the epistle reading, we see Paul on trial for the ideas he is teaching related to the resurrection, or psychologically the teaching of the spiritual body discussed previously. The ontological ground of personality reiterates to him that this message is crucial to spiritual truth on earth. In the gospel reading, the ontological ground of personality again discusses the process by which it is revealed in the lives of human beings. First, it is experienced as a projection. This is seeing the ontological ground in the world and in perception. Second, it is experienced as absence, which is mourning and repentance. Third, it is experienced as revelation. This is the intuitive religious experience discussed in Starbuck. In the second phase, the individual asks nothing, but is only aware of the deficits, not deficits of morality, integrity, or evil, but more acutely the original deficit of a human being who has within them a longing for dependence, think of Schleier Mater. In the third phase, the individual is given the revelation of the ontological ground of personality, which is the bedrock of future, future personal development and, as discussed previously, the salvific understanding of oneself, the world, and human beings. To be given this revelation, the individual must, must ask God. God, in psychological understanding, is the transpersonal constitution of the individual. The ask of the individual is to see and understand the transpersonal, that is, the a priori, before experience. The a priori, however, cannot be experienced. Therefore, through this attempt to understand the transcendental, that is, the conditions of experience, the synthetic a priori, what is revealed is the empirical condition of the individual themselves, which is mental experience, that is, the ontological ground of personality. The phrase, the phrase asking God is appropriate, since the empirical conditions of relationship with the a priori are personal. In clinical application, there is little that the counselor can do in this three-part process. Notice the only element related to the outer world is the perception of, in the first stage, the ontological ground as experience in projection. That means that there is no outer experience that catalyzes the inner transformation, only the propensity for the outer world to direct the projection back to itself. Where we talked yesterday of the freedom of one and the other, we talked today of the freedom of the one from the other. Both techniques are important. The one discussed previously is the intervention of the initiate on the uninitiated, where the one discussed today is the manner of initiation. It is worth considering, therefore, the historical limitations placed on access to the Bible, which in this detail is the manner of initiation of an individual into what would historically be understood as an office of the church over against its congregation, who in that office receives from those in office the intervention of the initiate as uninitiated. It is worth considering, therefore, the historical limitations placed on access to the Bible, which in this detail is the manner of initiation of an individual into what would historically be understood as an office of the church over against its congregation, who receives from those in office the intervention of the initiate as uninitiated. With the advent of the Protestant ethic of priesthood of believers, each believer was thought to fulfill the role of an office that is an initiate. Not in the sense of receiving from the initiated those sacraments intended for the uninitiated, which cloak and hide your maintenance of action, but in the sense of being initiated into the mysteries themselves. This raises the question of how religion might operate with each of its adherents as an official. There is no uninitiated mass to whom the sacraments are minister, conceptualized here as psychological healing, and each member is one who can and does heal, then there might exist an excess of healers for whom there is no one to heal. Of course, this would be quite a utopian outcome. But it does raise the question of, in the secularization of this office in the profession of clinical psychotherapy, how an economy might exist in which every role is that of a counselor, since in such a case there would be no economic production of goods. We therefore posit there exist two types of beings who are not in the office of healing, quote, office of healing, those who require healing and those who understand healing, but that do not take it on as vocation. If the office of healing is the highest office of spiritual practice, then it seems we must posit some being from spiritual practice, namely those who understand healing but who do not take it as vocation, is not the highest goal. Perhaps, but another way, these individuals may effectuate a manner of healing that is not psychological, that is, or maybe not introverted, i.e., the production of economic goods and services outside the healing sector that effectuate some outer healing that is an extra healing. For example, the supply of electricity, automobiles, and other operational economic products. Something similar can be said of those who are not, quote, healed, or don't understand healing, or receive healing as a sacrament. This analysis suggests that there exists, even in the Protestant tradition, a distinction between vocational and non vocational spiritual healing or spiritual understanding. The distinctive feature of the healing vocation is therefore not first related to working all things for good, but rather observing that is seeing and communicating to endless hands the way in which all things do work for the good. This might involve, for example, dream interpretation or other ways of connecting with the spiritual psychological building blocks of the endless hands psychic experience. Further, this philosophical theological maxim is of course taken from Romans 8.28, which continues that this is the case, that is, that all things work for the good, for those who are in Christ. An elaboration of the meaning of this latter phrase is therefore warranted. We must ask, since the ontological ground of personality is alive and active in all human beings, whether there is a certain manner of relationship with which causes variable external outcomes, or whether this phrase relates primarily to a mode of perception and intuition which merely understands the immutable outer determinism effect in a different way. But differently, if our understanding of Christ is the psychological referent of the ontological ground of personality, is being in Christ a matter of outcome, that is, the production of good things, where there would have otherwise been bad things, or is it just a matter of interpretation, that is, an outcome invariant to change, and only change in understanding? We must answer the affirmative to both, with the understanding that outcome is understood as a result of interpretation, both of which are not in accordance with the quote pharisaical understanding of ego expectation, but the Pauline. It's the actualization of the possibilities latent in the universal ontological ground of personality, that is, the transformation of the original image of God and humankind into an image of Christ. 